And for some reason, we'll have to get that looked at. But we'll praise God. Well, you know, uh, I know we uh, physical health is important, right? And, um, you know, and we have evidence of being in good shape or being good in good physical shape. You go to the doctor, you get a physical, right? You know, and, and, the, and the doctor, he or she verifies the evidence to make sure that you are healthy. And the doctor will check your weight, your height, your blood pressure. The doctor will check your cholesterol, right? You're, right, right, doc? That's right. That's right, Dr. Klein. Uh, and uh, you check your, your, your uh, blood sugar. Let's check your hearing. Huh? I saw that, Larry. Check your vision. Check, you know, make sure that, that you don't have any weird aches or pains. And if you do, then, then, then you'll get, you know, they'll run more tests. They'll, sh- you know, give you an X-ray or give you MRIs or give you CT scans. Those are the things that, you know, that they, they you know, then, and then uh, if, they, if that, you know, they, they'll give you crutches or, or uh, whatever. You know, they'll, they'll try to make sure that you are in good shape. And our bodies are pretty amazing. But. We need to have them in good health. We need to have them in good health. And just like, uh, you know, we're able to uh, to do more when we have more strength. We're able to be more alert. We're able to have more endurance. We're, we're able to have, uh, you know, just the, the mental quickness because we're taking care of ourselves. We're exercising. We're, you know, we're eating right. Those are the things that, that, that we need to do to have our bodies in, in good health physically. And just like our bodies, our physical bodies, uh, it's same is true with the church. The church, you know, the body of Christ is the same thing. Church health is a lot like our physical health. We've got to be healthy as a church. And that's so important because, you know, we know what an unhealthy church looks like. We know what an unhealthy church looks like. You know, they're weak. They're lazy. They're powerless. They're inward focused. They're negative. They're judgmental. They're lifeless. And an unhealthy church is unattractive and boring, disconnected from life, from real life. And those are the adjectives that you hear from those who are on the outside, those who are dechurched, those who are unchurched. Those how that's how they describe the church in those in those terms. Because a lot of them have been victims of unhealthy churches. They, they, they are the, the walking debris of, of, of bickering and battles and negativity and judgmental behavior. And, and, and as a result, they, they, are, they want nothing to do with that. They want nothing to do with that church. But we're going to see here, the book of Acts, it gives us a beautiful yet simple model of a healthy church. A beautiful yet simple model of a healthy church. And this is, this is not something that, that needs to be applied thousands of years ago, but it can be applied today in our church right now, in, in the modern church that we live in right now. You know, because this, this church, as we, as we read about, as we learned about, this became a mega church overnight. They went from, in one day, this church grew from 120 people to over 3,000 in one day, and it continued to grow. That way, it wasn't a flash in the pan. It wasn't one and done. Verse, verse Acts chapter 2, we're going to be in Acts chapter 2. In verse 41, it says, so those who received his word, talking about Peter, he preached this message they were baptized and they were added to the church about 3,000 souls. You know, just the unbelievable quantitative growth that, you know, and that's, that's, a, that's a good sign of church growth when, you know, when you see numerical growth. But I tell you, anybody can draw a crowd of people. You know, you bring some famous dude to church or you bring some you know some uh uh you know whoever you like you know bring them or you bring you know you give food away or or you you know you 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 provide a meal you know people are going to show up right that's it's it's not hard to draw a crowd of people all you got to do is give give the crowd something that they want 
But this crowd of people, they came at Pentecost, they were confused. A lot of them, they were even cynical. And they responded to, to, to Peter's message in a way that was, that was totally, they, they had to ask the question, what do we do? What do we do now? Because, because this bold, Holy Spirit-inspired message on Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit empowered the church to be witnesses for Jesus, this crowd had encountered the power of Pentecost. That day where they heard the glory, the, the glory of God being described to them in their own language. You know, they, they were witnesses of all of that, the significance of Pentecost. And in Peter, he, he gave them just a beautiful uh, description of what Pentecost was all about. And this crowd realized that Jesus, the one they murdered, the one they murdered, the one they killed, was the long-awaited Messiah. Was and is the long-awaited Messiah. Even though Jesus' death was all a part of God's perfect plan, Jesus conquered death just like King David prophesied. Peter, he talked about all of this. This message that he preached was, was so incredible and and the body you know he says he said that this body would not see decay talking about the resurrection of Jesus and so not wanting to be enemies of God they fell into deep conviction under the power of the Holy Spirit that the crowd asked what must we do and then Peter replied in verse 38 each of you must repent of your sins, turn to God, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This wasn't a one and done thing. This wasn't a flash in the pan. This wasn't the end of the book of Acts. This was just the beginning. It didn't just fizzle, but the crowd stuck around. The crowd stayed. The crowd continued to be together, and the crowd became the first church. And their response in verse 42 through 47, this is where our text is. This is where we're going to be landing this morning. It says this in verse 42 through 47. It says, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, and the breaking of bread, and, and the prayers. And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. Let me read that again. You got your Bibles? Here it is, 42. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship and to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done throughout the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the, pro the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together, breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Let's pray. God, I thank you for just these verses that describe a church that is healthy, a church that we want to be, God. Lord, the simplicity of these words, the simplicity of us just coming together and just looking to you and worshiping you. God, I pray, Lord, that you would do a great and mighty and marvelous work in us right now, God. Lord, that you would convict us, Lord, of things that, that maybe we're not doing with joy, God. Maybe we're not doing with generosity. God, maybe we're not doing, Lord, we're not being teachable, God. Whatever it is, Lord, that, Lord, I pray, God, that you would just address those things in our hearts as we look to Scripture. And God, I pray, Lord, that you would do a mighty and a marvelous work right now in and through us, through the power of your Holy Spirit. God, we thank you. We thank you and we praise you. Bless this time. Prepare our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, listen. 
Healthy churches prioritize the four pillars of worship. You're like, what's the four pillars of worship? Well, I tell you, that's verse 1. Verse 1. Verse, I'm sorry, not verse 1, verse 42. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Just go, just, just focus on that scripture because it says this. I'm going to read in the New Living Translation. It says, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to the sharing of meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. So what are the four pillars of worship? First, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Secondly, what is it? Fellowship, right? Fellowship. Thirdly, sharing meals, including the Lord's Supper. And then finally, prayer. Prayer. The four pillars of worship was teaching fellowship, sharing meals, and the Lord's Supper, and prayer. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. From the very beginning, the early church was devoted to hearing, studying, and learning what the apostles had to teach. You know, the Holy Spirit would remind the followers of Jesus of this cru- of, of the crucial truths by which the church would be directed. And, 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 you know, John chapter 14, Jesus, this is the farewell message that Jesus preached and Jesus taught to the disciples. In, in John chapter 14, 15, and 16, it's that Jesus, he reminds the, 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 the disciples, he says, listen, he says in verse 7, he says, uh, you know, John, I'm going to be in John chapter 14, 15. It says, uh, verse 17 of John chapter 14, it says, e- Jesus says this, he says, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, you know him for he dwells with you and will be with you. The Holy Spirit knows us, and he dwells within us. Verse 25 and 26, Jesus continues, says, These things I have spoken to you while I, while I am still with you. But the Helper, the what? The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and be and, and bring you, and bring to, I'm sorry, and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So, G, so the Holy Spirit is the helper. The Holy Spirit will help and will, and will teach you the things and bring those things to remembrance. So the apostles, they relied on the power of the Holy Spirit to teach and to lead because they heard from the Holy Spirit, right? Chapter 16, verse 13. It says, Jesus says, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all, what? truth for he will not speak on his own authority but whatever he hears he will speak and he will declare to you the things that are to come listen that's the power of the holy spirit that's the holy spirit you know speaking into the the, the disciples into the apostles into the believers and this teaching was was led and was empowered by the holy spirit through the apostles, and when and when teaching and preaching, uh, you know, in, in any capacity, we must be ready. We must be ready. I must be ready. I must be led by the Holy Spirit. Anybody who preaches must be read by, must be led by the Holy Spirit. Any see any any message that you have in season and out of season, we've got to be ready to to declare it under the power of the Holy Spirit. We must be prepared. We must be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. So regardless of leadership position, regardless of title, we must always be learning and always be teachable. We must always be learning and always be teachable regardless of what position you have. Listen, as your pastor, I must always be learning and I must always be teachable. That's uh, just because I'm the pastor of the church doesn't mean that I've arrived. Listen, I'm always, you've always got to learn. I've always got to learn. I love the leadership that we have in our, in our section, in our, you know, throughout. The, it's, 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 we're always learning, right? We're always learning. We always got to be teachable. Secondly, fellowship. The second pillar is fellowship. 
the fellowship, it, you know, the Greek, it says, it talks about the word uh, fellowship as being koinonia. It's a, it's a nice Greek word, but it means association with close relationships. You know, this was more than just getting together. Certainly more than just a religious meeting. It involves sharing goods, having meals together, and praying together. They spent time with one another. They did life together. They had meals. They, they walked through good times as well as tough times together. That's what fellowship is. Sharing meals and including, including the Lord's Supper. It refers to communion, having communion services that, that celebrated in remembrance of Jesus, the sacrifice that Jesus paid for us. When, when Jesus did that at the Last Supper, that was, that was a pattern that, that the believers, they did. They, they did the Last Supper, and it's likely to include regular meals that they shared together. It's beautiful to see when, whenever you, you, you have a meal together, it's, it, you know, there's conversation that goes on. There's, there's fellowship that goes on. And then when you remember Jesus, you put Jesus at the center of it all, the, the sacrifice that Jesus paid. You do this in remembrance of Jesus because we're here because of what Jesus did for us. Amen? And then finally, prayer. Prayer is that pillar that joins, uh, you, know, the, the, you know, in the sharing. It, and it's always, prayer is always, prayer always joins the sharing of the Lord's Supper. It's, it's remembering the sacrifice that Jesus did to, you know, to, uh, uh, to explain the word fellowship. You know, these are part of, of two adjectives that were put together uh, of their regular meetings. Prayer had always been the mark for the believer's gathering. Verse 43 it says this, it says, as a result of all this, and all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. They were, they were together. They, you know, all signs and wonders and miracles, they happen. The word all, it refers to, uh, you know, it translated a, a fear of the Lord, just a righteous fear. The, the, the awe was, was, par, was partially uh, caused by many miraculous signs and wonders performed by the apostles. And the wonder, the wonder, were, they were, you know, were because of the, the fabulous miracles that invoked awe in certain, you know, that, that, that they saw, the wonders and the miraculous signs were given to authenticate the message and the messenger, pointing people to the divine source of the miracle and the divine truth that that represents. And here we see signs and wonders and miracles uh, that authenticated the apostles' message. The signs and wonders and miracles, those are what happened as a result of the message that the apostles were preaching that identified the message of that divine truth. Those are the four, the four pillars of, of worship when it comes to a healthy church. Those are the things that we we must focus on. We must make priority. Secondly, a healthy church, healthy churches are full of joy and generosity. Healthy churches are full of joy and generosity. The people were generous with their resources. The people were generous with with their resources, verses 44 and 45, it says, And all who believed were together and had all things in common. They were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. What an incredible testimony of generosity. You know, the shortened word, for fellowship koinonia here, common, the Greek word is, is koina. It's, it's, it's part of fellowship. It's that thing that's in common. The, the commonality is that fellowship, but it's common. The, the, whatever, the, you know, they, the, the, all the believers, they had all things in common. It was part of fellowship. You know, the, you know just think about just at this moment, at this time, you know, during this first Pentecost, uh, of, of the thousands of Jews, thousands, they came uh, and made this pilgrimage to Jerusalem for Pentecost. And, and many even stayed, you know, as, you know, they, they were there for Passover 50 days before Pentecost. Rather than making two trips, they made one trip and they stayed there. And, 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 and Pentecost was kind of the end of that, of that celebratory period. 
and now, you know, because of this, because of Pentecost, they kind of extended their stay in Jerusalem. And many, you would think that many had many needs. They had financial needs and physical needs to help them, that they lived in Jerusalem. And so, so the need arose. The need was pretty great when it came to these new believers. They were willing to sell their possessions to help the needy person. The, this practice was, was having everything in common was likely the response to the specific need that they encountered on this day. And we see after, you know, all of a sudden, you, you know, you look, you look a few chapters later when Ananias and Sapphira, they passed away, they died on the spot because of the giving lie that they, we're going to talk about that later on in the book of Acts. But it's interesting because after that moment, this sharing of everything, it, it ceased it wasn't like that in the in, in the in that in that time and so you know just it was just the the first few weeks of the church where they where they saw this where they did this however freely and generosity f- freely and gener- freely and generously giving to those in need it's still a mark of a healthy church it's still the mark of a healthy church freely giving and being free with with the resources that we have secondly the people were generous with their hospitality. The people were generous with their hospitality. Verse 46, it says, And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts. You know, Luke, he pointed out that the believers were gathering both in the temple in large groups, and, all, you know, that's where they, they probably heard the ap- apostolic teaching, and then also in their homes, they, were, they celebrated the Lord's Supper. They had fellowship. They shared the needs that were in their small groups. And, and they prayed together. They did that in the home. So they, 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 they had both. And, and, I, and I think so a lot of times in our, in, our, uh, in, our, in our Christian culture, we don't see, we, don't, we, we fail to recognize that these were first Jews. These were first Jews. And at first, you know, the, the Jewish believers, they didn't separate from the rest of the Jewish community. They, they still went to the temple. They still went to the synagogue for worship. And, they, you know, as, as you know, they, they, they received their instruction in the scriptures. But their belief in Jesus created some friction between the Jews who did not believe that Jesus was the Messiah and themselves. And when, when the believing Jews were forced to meet in private, you know, that's when the, the Jews, they were forced to meet in, in, in private homes for communion, for prayer, for teaching about Christ. But, but by the end of the first century, many of the Jews, many of the Jewish believers, they were excommunicated from the synagogue. They weren't welcome to be a part of the synagogue anymore. You see that, you know, as you read through the book of Acts, you see that that's, that's you know, Paul's ministry and, and, and how he went from different synagogues. But then eventually there would be riots and persecution and all that. That's the result of all of that. There was that tension that, that arose as a result. And, but, so, but, but so many wonderful things, they happened, happened in the homes. Of, and it marks the point of just that close relationship that God wants to bring in the body of Christ. God wants us to be connected together. God wants us to have that close relationships and small groups and hospitality, sharing the needs and sharing meals and homes. That's, that's where barriers are broken. That's where beautiful things and openness takes place, where God is able to work in, in, the, in the confines of people's homes. Where it, that's, that, that is what God intended, and that's, what the, that's the, the sign of a healthy church, where, where, where we're welcome to go into one another's homes. I'm like, you're like, man, my home's a wreck. Don't, you know? But I tell you what, the hospitality was there. The, they were there. It was right. It was there and then. And, and I tell you, that, that's a challenge I know for me. I'm like, man, I tell you, it would be nice to have people in our homes and, and, you know, even our neighbors just inviting our neighbors over for a barbecue and things like that when, you know, weather's starting to get warmer. But I tell you, hospitality was, was something that was so important to the early church. And we see that throughout the book of Acts that homes were, were places of worship that play were places of, of prayer. There were places of gathering, of laughter, and of joy. We, we see that as we look through the book of Acts. Because, listen, 
people were full of joy. People were full of joy. The generosity was there, but the joy was there as well. People were full of joy. Whenever the gospel message went, it brought joy to those who believed. Joy is there. Joy joy is the theme that followed this theme throughout the book of Acts. I, I put scriptures, you know, in Acts chapter uh, you know, five you know, five through sixteen. There's there's various scriptures there that I, I put on your handout. But I'm gonna kind of go through it really quick in verse 46. Let me read verse 46, part of our text. It says, it says that in the in the NLT it says, They worship together in the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great what? Joy and generosity. Acts 5.41, the apostles, they left the Sanhedrin after, after being persecuted. They rejoiced because they counted worth, they were kind of worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Acts 8.8, 8, it says, you know, Philip from, from Samaria says, so, so, there, so there was great joy in the city. 839, when, when they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. 1132, when he and when he when Barnabas arrived and he saw the evidence of, of God's grace, he was glad and, and encouraged them to, to, to all remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. Verse 12. 12, 12, chapter 12, verse 14, when, when he recognized Peter's voice, he was so overjoyed. He, she was so overjoyed that she ran back without opening it and exclaimed, Peter's at the door. When, when they were praying for Peter to be released from prison, there was joy that filled, filled the place because God worked. God set Peter free. In verse in chapter 13 verse 48 in Iconium when Paul was there when the when the when the Gentiles heard this they were glad and honored the word of the Lord and all who were appointed for etern- all were who were appointed for eternal life believed chapter 13 verse 52 and the disciples were filled with joy and with the holy spirit you can go on and on i love verse 6 chapter 16 verse verse 30 34 when the Philippian jail jailer was about to kill himself because because the because everybody the, the, the doors were open you know when, when he when he encountered that that salvation it was for him and his household chapter 16 verse 34 the Philippian jailer brought them into the house into his house and set a meal before them and he was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God he and his whole household. Listen, joy is the evidence of a healthy church. And I know as followers of Jesus, we're not exempt from struggle. We will face challenges, but even when the pressure is up, what ought to come out is joy. Joy ought to come out of our life. We should be marked by joy. We should be identified as people who have supernatural joy because our joy is made complete in Jesus. Our joy is made known because the Holy Spirit lives within us. Our joy is to uh, to encourage other people within the body of Christ. Joy is not because of our circumstances. It's the mark of a healthy church. And these believers had glad and sincere hearts. They were praising God. The early church was marked by joy. Healthy churches were growing churches. Healthy churches are growing churches. Verse 47, the last verse of chapter 2, it says, it says praising God and, enc- and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily. Those who were being saved. Praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Two final statements reveal this. You know, first, 
you know, just the, these wor- the, the, you know, the presence of God, the, the, the regular meeting together, the sharing, the, the money sharing, the miracle working, the Bible studying, the, you know, just the evidence, the, the things that came about, these two final things here, the, 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 the watching community was favorably impressed. The watching community was favorably impressed. The people were enjoying the favor of all the people. They, the, the, those on the outside, they, they said something's going on in that place. That's what we want, right? We want other people to say, man, something's going on at New Life Assembly of God. God is at work here. God is doing something incredible here. And then the watching community was coming to faith. It says, and the Lord added to the number daily those who were being saved. The watching community was coming to faith. People on the outside, they saw something was going on. So they came and they came and God did the work and God saved them. The Jerusalem church experienced both qualitative and quantitative growth. The quality and the quantity. The quality and the quantity was growing. So the nature of a healthy organism is to grow. The nature of a healthy organism is to grow. When a church body emphasizes strong worship and solid biblical teaching in an atmosphere of true believers mixed with consistent evangelism, constant evangelism, talking about Jesus, talking about the gospel, inviting people to come and encounter the love of Jesus personally every single day. And it's more than just in our church service, but it's outside of our church service. It's in our workplaces. It's in our families. We're talking about Jesus. We're letting people know that there is hope because Jesus is alive. We are not afraid of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We know it is the power of God and the salvation. Listen, when that happens, our church will be healthy. It will be a healthy church when that is our focus. When the body of Christ emphasizes strong worship, solid biblical teaching in an atmosphere of true fellowship mixed with consistent evangelism, it will be healthy. And a healthy Christian community will be attracted and people will come to Christ. Let's focus on the main thing. Let's focus on the things that God has already made possible for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just pray right now. God, I just thank you. I thank you, Lord, for for what you're doing, Jesus. God, I thank you for your power, for your Holy Spirit. God, I thank you for ministering to us, Lord. I thank you for blessing us, Lord Jesus. God, I ask you, Lord, that you would do a mighty and a powerful work in us today, Lord. We believe you that, uh, that Lord, you want to just change our hearts. God, you want to convict us of things, Lord, maybe that, that we're not, uh, Lord, that we're, maybe we're not as teachable as we need to be. Lord, maybe we're not at a place where we're, uh, we're, we're, we're identified as people of joy. God, maybe we're not, Lord, gathering together consistently. Lord, more than just in the temple, more than just on Sunday mornings. But, Lord, we're here on Wednesdays. We're here. We're gathering in our homes with people, with church people who love you, Jesus, who who are encouraging and blessing one another. And, Lord, I pray, God, Lord, that we would be people of prayer, God, that we would not just be maybe just come into a prayer meeting, but Lord, it would be a lifestyle of prayer, God, that we would consistently be talking to you and having fellowship with you and knowing you and loving you, Jesus. And Lord, I pray, God, that out of the outflow, out of the overflow, Lord, as we learn from you, God, as we learn from your word, God, that we would be, Lord, that we would be bold, uh, Lord, empowered by the Holy Spirit, bold about you, Jesus, bold about the word that you've given us, Lord, because the word is in season. And I pray, God, that you would give us those moments, give us those opportunities, Lord, as we speak your truth, God, that you would open up the doors. And God, I pray, Lord, that we would mark 
be, Lord, that we would, ha- Lord, hit all the marks of a healthy church. And, Lord, I know it is a work in progress, and it is something that we need to continue to focus on. Because, Lord, I know that your desire is for us to reach our Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth, to be witnesses for you, Jesus. And, Lord, it's more than just more, more than just a Sunday morning thing, but, Lord, it is, it is everywhere we go that we want to be empowered by your Holy Spirit to accomplish those things for you. Jesus, we, we pray, God, that you would help us to grow. Lord, that we would see people come into our church and they would encounter the love of Jesus in such a way where they have to come back because they're compelled by the love of God that brings them back, that, give, that brings them to our church, God. Not, not that we get all the glory, not that we get any of the glory, but God, you get all the glory. God, use it for you. Use all of this. And Lord, I pray, God, that we would, Lord, ha- be a healthy church that people can come to. Lord, where they're not, they're not feeling like they're gonna, they're on guard. But Lord, that they come in here and they know that we're, we're all, we're all broken people who need to be healed by you, Jesus. And Lord, I thank you. I thank you for what you're doing. Bless us. Speak to us. Encourage us convict us by your Holy Spirit that we would be all that you've called us to be and more. God, that we wouldn't limit our our thinking, but Lord, we would know that we would see signs and wonders and miracles, but Lord, all of that happens when we put the main thing, the main thing. Help us with that, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I've got a few questions I want to ask you as we close. Is your life attracting others outside of the church to Jesus? Is your life, is what you say and what you do attracting other people outside of the church to come to Jesus? Second question. Are joy and generosity characteristics that define us? Our joy and generosity characteristics that define us. And thirdly, are the four pillars of worship that are highlighted in the church, or are the four pillars of worship highlighted as a church and personally, individually and corporately, lived out as simple priorities for life? Simple priorities for life. Verse twenty, verse forty-two. It says, uh, "I'll, I'll let you, uh, we'll, we'll go back to that slide." But in verse forty-two, here's the pillars of faith: they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the to fellowship, the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Devoting yourself to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, and the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Are you teachable? Are you teachable? Does God, is God speaking to you about that? Don't think that you know it all because you don't. None of us do. We're all learning. We're all, we all got to be teachable. And the Holy Spirit is the greatest teacher of us all. Submitting to leadership. Are we willing to do that? Even when it's hard, even when it takes humility. Are we fellowshipping with one another or are we isolating? Are we fellowshipping? You know, more than just uh, more than just on a Sunday morning, but you know what? Are we contacting other people, maybe who aren't who aren't here right now, or, or they, you know, just maybe meeting up with them, maybe meeting up for lunch, or maybe having them in in your home? But I'd say fellowship is that is that a priority for you? Breaking of bread, having meals together, you know, the communion, you know, remembering Jesus, having that communion together. I love I love. Wish we could do, wish we could do communion every day. We can do communion every day. But I tell you, but we remember that that Jesus came and then we pray. It's not just uh, you know just before meals, but it's always remembering that it's the priority that we have to prayer. When somebody's in need, you say, you know, first thing you come, you say, you know what? Let me pray for you. Like, you know that that is the that is the message. Are those the four the four pillars that that navigate your life? The simple priorities of your life are those the four? Are those the four? Listen, that's the that is what makes a healthy church. Those are the marks of a healthy church. Let's do it. Amen. Amen. Lord, I thank you. I thank you.
I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you for your presence. Lord, I pray, God, you would speak to us. You would encourage us, Lord. In these questions, Lord, I pray, God, that we would truly just say, God, I just, I need you to, to give me joy. God, I need you, Lord, to give me a, a heart that is generous, Lord. I, I need you, Lord, to, to make my life just a reflection of you, Jesus, as I, as I come into your presence, as I, as I just, just continue to abide in the love of Jesus, that that comes out in what I say, in what I do, in how I look, and what, and just the, the joy that I have, that you would get all the glory, you would get all the praise. And Lord, I pray, God, that the, the Lord, that, 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 that I would be teachable. Lord, that I would, uh, Lord, receive maybe uh, some criticism that, that I need to, or some challenges, or be willing to, to, to be accountable for the things that I, Lord, that I do. And Lord, the fellowship and the breaking of the bread and the gathering together and the prayer. God, help me, Lord, to put those things at the forefront of what I do and what I say. Lord, that you would be glorified in all that goes on today, Jesus. We love you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your presence, God. We thank you that you are doing a great and a mighty work today. Bless us. Speak to us. Lead us. We, we just thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, I'm just going to put this out there. If you would like prayer, maybe you just need, uh, maybe there's some things that you need uh, God to do a work in your life. Any of those, those three questions. I, I'd love to pray for you. Um, you know, if you want to just maybe gather with somebody you want to pray, pray, pray for, pray with, uh, please do that. I just want to make sure that, you know, we're sensitive to all those who are working in the back uh, with their kids. So make sure you get your kids. God bless you guys. Have an incredible, incredible week. And uh, we'll see you back on, on Wednesday uh, for prayer. And we'll see you back uh, for our Bible study on Wednesday. Love you guys. Oh, youth group.